Welcome to another Sword of Convalaria video. As always, I'm Evil, and if you guys like the content, please make sure you subscribe. We're still trying to hit 1,000 by the end of the year, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I decided to make this little uh, class of sorts in order to help those who are not used to tactical RPGs or those who just want to have information about Sword of Convalaria. I decided to compile this kind of a uh, this kind of class, this course in order to make you prepared for when the game launches on July 31st. This is gonna be just a nice little easy breakdown of a lot of the different systems in the game. So then that way that when you jump into the game, you will be prepared and you will understand what all of these content creators are talking about when we start making our videos. So let's go ahead and jump right in and let's talk about what you need to know about the units. So they, the, the, the developers at Sword of Convalaria were happy and, you know, not happy, but were nice enough to provide us with a lot of information on their Twitter, if you haven't looked at it. And I've, I've kind of compiled it a little bit, and it's still going to be lengthy, but I want you guys to be prepared for when you go ahead and play the game. So let's go ahead and talk about getting to know the characters. Sword of Convalaria has five different roles each of those roles are different and each of those roles are important so when you're looking at this you have the breaker the seeker the defender the watcher and the destroyer knowing your roles is vital to success in sort of convalaria if you just go in willy-nilly and you don't know what you're doing or if you go in there and you just don't understand what's going on you can very well just completely destroy your run so you need to know what the characters do, how the characters work, and how these roles are important. Breaker classes are the physical DPS. They're the ones that you see wielding big axes, big swords, lances. Um, they do high amount of physical DPS. They do a, and DPS stands for damage per second. They do a high amount of damage. These are the guys that are gonna be up there in the face they have a lot of different skills that will allow you to use the battlefield, um, kind of like knockbacks, stuns, things like that. And above all, these are going to be your, your heavy hitters when it comes to physical DPS. Seekers are the assassin slash range, physical range characters. So these are the guys who are either going to have very very high damage output they're going to have really good movement so they, they can move you know usually pretty good distances across the map something like coal coal has a high movement um they usually have very high speed so that their initiative for the turn count is going to be higher which we'll talk about that later but above all the seekers are high damage high risk characters um and like I said, they're usually like either archers for like physical range um, or they're assassin characters who just dish out a lot of damage, but they can't take a hit. They usually have skills that allow them to survive, but only for so much until you're getting pounded on. Defenders are the tanks. These are the ones that have crowd control effects. These are the ones that have usually like taunt these are the ones that are usually just soaking up a lot of uh, a lot of damage and they usually don't have strong dps but of course there are characters who are outliers um, but above all defenders are very important to be able to try to take aggro or take advantage of protecting your team so that they're not completely wiped out and they soak up a lot of damage in some way, some form, are able to either provide shields for your characters or shields for themselves. They're allowed to, they make enemies focus them more often. Um, they do crowd control effects like AOE stuns or, you know, something of that nature. And every once in a while, you'll get one that has a, a high damage output. Watchers are the healers and the buffers of the game. So these are characters who are usually focused on either providing single target heals, area of effect heals, or they provide some sort of buffs and crowd control 
um, not crowd control, but party, um, party utility. They provide some type of utility that keeps your party alive, that keeps your team alive, so that you're able to continue dishing out damage. And then destroyers are the mages or magic DPS. These are the characters that are either blowing up with magical spells, kind of like barrel, or characters who have hybrid damage, kind of like the temp uh Dantel Dantelian Dantelian who does physical and magic damage or just straight up mages that just throw out burst boom blows things up. Now what's very important is to know the roll counters. The roll counters is a very important thing to know when you're playing this game. You want to look at all of your enemies and look at all of their roles so that you know which ones to use in your teams in order to counter and destroy them. The role, uh, the role counter is, as you can see here, you have breakers who significantly do heavy damage against defenders, and but they're not going to do a lot of strong damage to seekers, which, you know, that's kind of they don't they don't get no damage bonuses against seekers so they kind of do regular damage against seekers but they don't do damage bonuses it's not that they don't do a lot of damage they just don't get those bonuses uh defenders they get bonuses against seekers but they don't get no type of bonuses against breakers and then seekers get uh bonuses against breakers but they don't really get no damn uh no bonuses against defenders knowing that trinity is going to allow you the clear content significantly faster significantly better and then when you look at the watchers and the destroyers the watchers deal a little bit of damage they deal damage to the destroyers destroyers deal damage to the watchers um it's kind of a trade-off because both of them are generally magic classes so they usually have high magic defense and um usually they don't get dealt that much damage when being hit with magic but you generally you can usually use characters kind of like um cole who's a seeker you can kind of use them to run up on characters like mages and be able to do a lot of damage on them because mages generally have lower physical defense so characters that are like breakers and seekers are really going to do a lot of damage onto those type of characters but this is very important to know so you got to understand this and this is, it's not hard but you got to understand this so that you know that when you're building your teams you know that when you're going on a map it's um what you're going up against now this right here to learn your unit skills and traits and when you learn their traits and their skills it gives you better feedback for when you're playing with your characters Every character has skill trees, and these skill trees, when you level them up, um, some skills are going to be highly more sought out than other skills. But understanding how your skills and your traits work will understand will help you understand how team compositions work. Okay, so prime example: there are certain characters who have leadership skills. And these are powerful and important if you want to play efficiently. Leadership skills give an aura to other people on your team that share the same tra uh, the same qualities as the um, as that character. So, prime example is that uh, back to Dontillion. He has a leadership skill which boosts up the abilities of characters from the kingdom of area so as long as there's members of kingdom of area within around his range and on his team then they get these bonuses and buffs just by existing on the same team as him these are very good bonuses that add up on top of any other character bonuses or skills that you might have based off of equipment or based off of the traits that you choose through the um, skill learning trees um, there are guides where people will tell you which skills are the best skills for that character. And those are generally to be followed. I would definitely say look through those and follow those. Um, if you would like to play the most efficient way possible and have your characters the best that they can be. Um, me, I'm going to kind of build my skill trees based off of my team compositions and what I have and what my teams can do. But this also follows into the next thing is 
don't waste your Castellias as they are very rare. When you're playing this game, Castellias, you don't get that many of them. And what Castellias do is that they allow you to unlock the other skill that you um, that you didn't choose. So when you look on this little top one right here, you see that there's a level rank level, and then you see two skills. You can only pick one. Well, the Castellia allows you to unlock the other one. Maybe somewhere down the line, all of your all their favorite characters or your strong characters will have all of their skills unlocked. And if that's the case, you can kind of mix and match skills based off of the situation. And some characters you're going to probably want to do that because you might need your Gloria to be who also has a leadership skill. You might be using her, but you're not using any other characters who are under her faction. So using that leadership skill may or may not be effective and you might want to use her other skill. But, you know, again, this all comes down to what units and characters that you get or what units and characters that you're trying to pull for in order when you're making your team compositions. You got to know your attributes because attributes are important. They're not important enough that you have to micromanage them, but understanding them and know what you're getting yourself into does help out so that each in sort of convoluted they've made it very easy they made it very simplistic physical attack magic attack physical defense magic defense max hp speed that's it knowing and they're pretty self-explanatory the physical attack is for your physical um for your physical damage and it applies to physical defense so Prime example, defenders generally have high physical defense. Um, they usually have some type of modifiers for their damage or for something, but above all, they have high physical defense with maybe like some reduced damage modifiers, whatever the character may be. You'll know that you don't want to use a physical attack character to hit a purse, a defender with a high physical defense because of that you're not going to do as much damage but you'll notice that some defenders are going to have or a lot of defenders are going to have lower magic damage which means you might want to use one of your destroyers or if you made one of your watchers do some type of dps but you want to move to the destroyers you might want to make one of your destroyers deal damage because those destroyers do magic damage which is going to do significantly more damage to the defenders so understanding this is going to help you out in the long run because when you're going into your maps you're going to see what enemies are on the field and you're going to see what kind of roles they have so when you look at their roles you're going to want to put characters that complement and they're going to complement each other but they're also going to complement the, the 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 enemy team that you're that they're going up against so understanding your attributes and knowing how that works is just going to be vital just like when you with the speed speed is very important because the speed dictates your action order so the higher the speed the more the, the faster those characters are going to go seeker characters generally have very high speed so with seekers you're going to know that they're going to go ahead of a lot of other enemies and therefore you want to plan your seekers out you want to plan that action order out and have your seekers go and seek out high priority targets to get rid of them so that they don't become pain in the asses so prime example when i was doing the closed beta my cole would always jump through the uh go through go through the enemy team just to go after the healers to kill their healers one shot back attacks done deal that was something that cole did so knowing how your seekers and this knowing how the action order works will help you plan out your strategy in the long run so it's very important but above all you know just keep calm and don't stress take your time manage your characters understand them don't stress out if you don't know that's why you have content great content creators like myself and others who are there to help you and guide you through your journey through the sword of convalaria game now, next up, we're going to talk about gear. This is not going to be as strictly detailed. Gear kind of already is self-explanatory. When it comes to gear, there's three types of gear. There's the weapon, the trinket, and then you have the totems. 
So the weapons and trinkets are what you're going to be using in order to um, build up your character's stats. You want to match the gear to what the character is doing. So if you have a seeker like Cole, you don't want to put gear on him that gives him high magic attack. It makes no sense. You want to put something on him that gives him high physical attack. So you want to take a look at your gear and know what the, each of your gear does and what their special abilities do so that you'll be able to make your character as strong as possible. Defenders, you want to give them as, as much de uh, physical defense as you can. But if you also know that your defender has a high physical defense but a low magic defense, maybe you want to put some type of gear on them that will give them a higher magic defense so that, that they're not bursted down by mages and they can survive a lot longer. These are things that you want to think about. You want to make sure that you upgrade your gear. Generally, what you want to do is you want to upgrade your legendary gear. Any legendary gear pieces that you get, you want to level those up. Um, you never want to throw away your legendary gear. I personally will not throw away any legendary gear that I get. Um, but you want to level up your legendary gear. They're going to be very important. They're the highest ranking gear that you can get with the characters at the current time. And they're very important. And you want to make sure that when you level them up, you use the materials, the required materials. And this is why resources is very important because you're only going to get a finite amount of resources until in the beginning of the game until the point where that you're going to have to be farming those resource dungeons a lot in order to level up your gear which makes your character significantly stronger when you're doing the star level ups this is when you get copies of that same gear so when you get copies of identical gear you can put them into one piece and then that will increase them when that increases them it increases their current stat effects so whatever abilities or stats they, bonus stats that they have by increasing that those stars and getting copies of them it increases those stat effects they're i mean there's some of them are significant some of them are minute I would say don't chase after leveling up gear. Don't chase after trying to get these, you know, all these extra stars. When it comes to legendary, um, to my knowledge, there are going to be weapon banners, and getting one copy of a weapon is not is not bad. But trying to get maxed out copies, don't want to stress yourself out with that. Um, having the, the the one star version of that gear is still going to be good yes having the five star gear is going to be better but the one star is still going to be good and it's going to do what's, what it's supposed to do and it's going to help your characters out the terror whispers are pretty much um extra buffs that go onto your characters the terror whispers are going to be there there's many of them they range from different um different types and abilities you want to take a look at them and see how it applies to your units so that when you do put them on your units it just gain makes your unit that much stronger and it gives them that much more ability you want to, you don't want to just throw tarot whispers on someone you want to make sure that it applies to them so that you max out the efficiency of your characters and you match out their you uh you max out their attributes as high as you can and you give them as much damage or utility as possible. So now let's talk about the lineup. Again, we're just gonna go ahead and blow through this really fast. Um, this one is just mostly talking about the materials that you're gonna be needing in order for characters. So when it comes to character development, you're going to get common EXP and that's gonna be for leveling up the main level of your characters. You'll get rank medals. The rank medals are used for um, uh, for getting like secret weapons to help your characters rank up. Um, they're basically when you get these medals, you get copies of them. And no, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I I spoke too I spoke out of line on that one. The rank medals are for your skills. The rank medals are used so that when you level up your for leveling up your skill ranks, so that you can unlock abilities for those characters. 
when you do get those rank medals, again, you want to be careful when you're leveling up your characters because you don't just want to throw them all out there. You want to make sure that when you start the game, you start with, you, you take a look at your, your units after you do all of your free pulls, you know, the free 40 pulls that we're getting. You want to make sure that when you get your legendaries and all that stuff, once you look at those, you want to rank up the characters that's going to give you the best, um, the best efficiency for when you're playing your teams you want to understand how your characters work and then you're going to use those rank up medals in order to get those skills so that you can go through the content accordingly the memory shards is what you're going to be using for when you level up the star rating of your characters and enhancing their trait skills every character has a trait skill when you're getting copies of those characters, you get memory shards, and then those memory shards you're going to use in order to rank up the, um, the stars of your character. I personally tell people, whenever you're going after debut characters or of any gacha game, getting one copy of that character is completely fine. You only need one copy of that character. The main reason for that is because in Sword of Con Valeria, you're able to farm for the memory shards once a day. So you're able to get those memory shards and you're able to get them and spread them out so that your characters are able to level them up and you can level up your legendary characters that way. I do believe CN or T, uh, Taiwan version said it can take up to about three to four months if you're just farming them but you don't want to chase out the copies that's a waste of pool economy that's a waste of the hope luck site unless you're going to be spending a lot of money you're going to be wailing castalia is again very important don't waste them you want to hold on to them unless you desperately need them because of a skill that's on a particular character we do not get a lot of these at all we don't get a lot so these are very these are probably the rarest materials in the game right now this right here just lets you know what the different materials that you're going to use to level up your gear and level up your taros so this is what all this right here so this levels up your gear your your weapon and your trinkets and this levels up your and upgrades your tarot whispers so that's very important um you can pause if you want to read this uh but that's what that tells you and then this right here is just an overview of how you can get those materials common exp you can get them up at the level up training rank medals you can get up at the rank up trials memory shards memory uh retrieval and so forth castellias you can unlock um castellia powers you can get those at the star level rewards for the fool's journey clash that's it's basically you know as you're doing the fool's journey and you're leveling it up and you're leveling up the rank, you can unlock Castellias. Um, so like I said, you don't get a lot of these. And then same thing with these right here. And then the Tarot's, you can get Tarot's uh, by breaking down other Tarot Whispers. Like I said, you don't wanna break down the legendaries. Um, you just want to go ahead and break down the lesser ones, but you only break down the lesser ones once you have a lot of legendaries. If you don't have a lot of legendaries, I would say don't break down anything lower than don't break down the the legendary or don't break down the epics. You can break down the rank, the epic, the, the ones that are below epic, the common and the rares. Break those down, but don't break down the rare, the, um, ah, so many. Do not break down the epics or the legendaries. Only break down rare and common. If you get a lot of legendaries, then you can start breaking down the rares if you want. Now, the next thing I want you guys to know is you need to learn the terrain. You need to learn the maps, okay? This game makes it so that you can use terrain in order to help out with completing the task. There are some terrains that have exploding barrels on them. When you hit them, they'll blow up and they will damage everything around them. They do a significant amount of damage. There is terrain where that you can knock enemies off the cliffs. You can knock them off cliffs, they'll land down on the bottom and then it deals a significant amount of damage based off how high they fell. You can push boulders on them and those boulders will roll down and they generally one shot anything that they hit and kills them right off the break. Or you can just knock them straight off the map. 
by just knocking them off the map, that's an instant kill. If they're able to be pushed back, and a lot of enemies are, if they're able to be pushed back, you knock them into the water, you knock them off the map, something like that, they die instantly. So having characters that do knockbacks, which, you know, breakers do knockbacks, uh, defenders do knockbacks rather well. Um, some seekers will do knockbacks with their um, the range ones. Some range seekers will do knockbacks as well. Like those characters, if you have them aimed properly and you can knock them off a cliff, or you can knock them off the map or into the river, do it. That's it's an easy not it's an easy kill <coughs> but learn the terrains there are other things in the in the map as well that you want to know like there's um these banners that you might see on the map and there's these um you might if you destroy those banners it makes every other enemy significantly weep, weaker just by destroying the banners so know the terrains know how to manipulate the map and know how to use your characters so that you can destroy or use them to your advantage so that you're able to win the match now we're going to talk about team compositions for a second okay so early in the game and early in the content, you can plow through the content. You can go through, you can put whatever characters that you want, and you can kind of just go ahead and plow through some of the content by just going ahead and playing it. I definitely recommend do not use the AI. The AI is horrible, but if you play, you want to play it manually, and you can pretty much steam through by putting you know, a whole team of breakers or a whole team of seekers in there. No healers, nothing like that. Now, because you're doing that, that's not an excuse to have poor team building. Me personally, whenever I play strategy games or tactic games like these, excuse me, I always make sure I have one tank, one healer, one buffer or debuffer, and two DPS. That's what I always generally do when I play these games. And it just makes it that much efficient and it makes it so that, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed if you know what you're doing in order to, um, win and defeat the content and beat the maps um sometimes you might not have a buffer or a debuffer and you might have another dps and that way you have three dps as a healer and a tank sometimes you might not have no tank sometimes you might not have no healer depending on what your characters do depending on what your characters provide really depends on how you can build your characters prime example maith Matha has a aoe heal that does significantly good heals you could use her as your tank slash your healer and then that way that removes the healer slot and then that allows you to put an extra dps on your team this is why again it is important to know your characters it's important to know your roles so then that way you're able to complete the content as content gets harder you're not going to be able to plow through the content you're going to need to know how to team build this is why i say learn how to team build at the beginning of the game so that it does not become a problem later on down the game when you know how your characters work, how they interact with each other, how your, you know, your Nurgle gets bonuses from your Dantelion because they're both from the Kingdom of Area, and you get those bonuses. When you know how that stuff works, and how they meant, you'll you'll be able to understand the intricacies of your of your teams, and you'll know that when you're building your teams, what you have, so that you can complete those maps. And that also means follow the roll counter. That roll counter table is important. You know that your seekers can do more damage and kill off the breakers that much faster because your seekers do extra bonus damage to breakers. So you're, if you know that the enemy team has three breakers, you definitely want to put one or two of your seekers on that on your team so that way you can get rid of them completely easy if you know the enemy team has a bunch of seekers on them then you know that you want to put defenders on there because your defenders do extra damage to seekers it's important to understand how the role counters work i cannot stress that enough when it comes to the gotcha system and the gotcha pulls you only want to pull on units that enhance your current teams. If you're trying to play efficient and you're trying to play with a goal in mind and you want to have the most efficient teams, pull on units that are going to make your current team setups better. If you have a team, a full decked out team uh, based off of, you know, uh, Gloria's, I forgot what Gloria's um, empire is. 
but she gives a bonus to everybody else in that same empire. So if you have a bunch of units that that are within that same empire, then pulling Gloria makes a lot of sense because Gloria is, is going to benefit you. And when you get her leadership ability, you know that that's going to make other members of that team grow. That's going to make other members of that team grow. And you know that that's going to increase your chance. When a new character comes out and they're part of that same, a new legendary debuts and comes out and they are part of that same empire that Gloria is in, yeah, you definitely want to pull on that because that's going to only benefit you and make your uh, make your games easier because they benefit from everyone has that see that that synchronized that synchronicity. Now, this is also not to say don't pull on what you don't want. You know, some people are just going to pull on characters that they want, and this is okay too. But just know that when you're pulling on your units and you're pulling on your characters, it's when you pull on characters that if you're pulling on nothing but you know all the characters that you like are healers having a team full of healers not necessarily going to be the best course of action even if you do down their skill tree and you make some of those healers dps damage dealers it's not exactly going to be the best course of action so you kind of want to find a good balance when you're pulling on characters and you know that once those character you know once those character banners are done they're going to go to the destined banner so they're going to have rate ups in the, in the in the future or when you're pulling on units you might get a copy of that character when you're pulling on uh when you're you know as a when you fail a 50 50 you might get a copy of that character that you want so you know it's not the end of the world the rate ups are really nice for the debut banners but you don't want to you know you don't you, you want to make good decisions when you're playing and this is only talking from a free to play or uh, even like a, a mild a small spender this is only looking at that point of view because like myself you know i'm going to be i'm going to spend money on the um on the battle pass and then i'll spend money on the 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 character selector i'll probably buy the character selector and then if there's a daily um hope luck site um thing where you spend like five dollars you get hope luck site every day i will i will definitely do that as well um but those are very important things because when you save up those hope, hope luck sites when you pull on those characters you want to make the right call to say that do you really need that character or are you just getting it because you really want them and there's nothing wrong to get characters if you really want i'm not saying there's anything wrong it's just that if you if you're looking to play efficiently if you're looking to play efficiently that's what you're going to do and then again Leadership skills help out a lot. Um, the characters that have leadership skills, if you know they got leadership skill and you know that character is going to make your team and make your units better, pull on those characters. Get those characters. If you get these, the, the selector, you know, if you pull and you get all your free units, your legendaries, and you realize that, oh, I have a lot of people from the kingdom of area. If you want to go ahead and purchase the selector to buy uh, Dentalian, do it it's going to make your experience that much better and it goes for anything else you know if you want to make sure that if you i'm not telling you to chase after leadership skills i'm just telling you that there if you want to play efficiently go ahead and get the characters that you want to get with those leadership skills you know if you want to re-roll your characters you want to keep re-rolling because you want to get a character with leadership skills, it's okay. That's honestly one of the biggest things that people prefer and people say to do. Getting one of those, you know, those high-end characters with those leadership skills because they last and they help out in the longevity of the game. They're going to be very strong for a very long time of time. So if you want to re-roll and you want to get those characters with leadership skills, go for it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you don't want to do that, you know, you don't have to. If you don't, if you want to spend a lot, if you want to spend money on the game and you want to, you know, wail out, go for it as well. You know, again, all this is just for people who are trying to play the game either efficiently or play the game casually or, you know, people who don't want to, you know, spend money and they want to be free to play. And that's it, guys. You're an official Voyager now. You got all the knowledge that you need in order to play and enjoy Sword of Convalaria when it comes out on July 31st. That's you, You're now ready to join and just dive into the Spiral of Destinies or go into the Fool's Journey or go into the many, many game modes that they announced on Saturday. 
So with that being said, guys, congratulations, and I can't wait to see you guys there. Um, I will be doing more content, more videos for Sword of Con Valeria, and please like, subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand um, subscribers by the end of the year, so hit them, hit them up. Put in the comments what you like about the video. Put in the comments um, if you have any questions. And just above all, you know, if you want to, if you have questions about the gotcha systems, I have a video um, that I did that talks about the gotcha system. And if you want to just, you know, if you have anything, just let me know, and I will def I respond to my comments. And then yeah, you guys take care of yourselves. It's been a pleasure, and I can't wait to see you guys in Sword of Convalaria. Peace.